Greetings Pokemons and welcome to another episode of the Polygon Pilgrimage and today we are going to be creating something pretty cool here inside of UV4. We've been doing a lot of stuff in Substance and I love it but I have all kinds of different challenges coming my way and so we pick them up and we run with them. So today, let me uh, return control here, what we are creating is this interactive uh, holographic star map. But as you can see here, if I hold still for a moment, you might be able to see it, yeah. The stars are actually rotating around the center console here. In the center console, I just kind of put together a model pretty quickly just for this uh, demonstration as are the textures for the room and everything in here. Uh, really the main focus was the stars themselves. So we have a couple different stars. We got three different types and then we have these decorative stars which are just uh, rotating nicely and all that's all they do. You actually cannot click any of these stars. But these stars you can click. And we're going to go over that in just a moment. And then we have the center console here. And at the top, you cannot see it because the banner blocks it. But we're going to go through each piece. So the basic idea is you run into the room here and you say, oh, let me, let me look at this star. And when I click it, it's going to give me the star information. And then the actor also rotates to face the camera. So no matter where I move, so if I turn on the other stars here, let's turn on the rest of these guys. There we go. So here's the three different types of stars and no matter where I move they're always facing me so I always have that information at my fingertips and so we're gonna go over how these are created and this is uh, just dummy data here you can put in any kind of information you want and this data is actually sourced from real stars so uh, these are different classifications of stars and the colors that they assume alright so let's go ahead and start in with the first thing we created here is this star rotation center and that's an invisible actor who is just in the bottom of the base here and all he does is spin in place let's go ahead and look at him and this is all he is so from the event tick we're going to pull over to an add actor local rotation and then what we're doing here is I created a variable this is a float it is editable right now it's set to 5 we could set that much higher and make them spin a whole lot faster and I'm going to make a rotator out of that and I'm only interested in connecting it into the Z, the yaw. So that's that, you know, turntable like operation there. And then we're going to multiply these together, put that into there and that into there and put that, push that into the delta rotation. Now the delta seconds go into here and having the event tick, that means it's gonna keep doing this. So it's gonna keep saying, let's rotate it a bit more, rotate it a bit more. And it just continues to spin forever. If I look at the viewport for this object, there's nothing to it, it's literally just the base object, I didn't touch anything else. You do have to check this movable though. That's part of the magic here, is we check that movable. All right, so then we have a couple different types of stars. I'm gonna show you how these work. They're basically in three parts. There is the actual blueprint itself. We have the material for it. And then we have a widget for it. So we're gonna go over those. So here's our base star. And this is the blueprint for him. So the blueprint is simply a sphere, and this is what holds our material. We have a hit area, and that is our collision. So this is a uh, spherical collision. There you go, sphere collision. And here are the settings here, if you're interested. Sphere radius, there you go. Uh, overlap all. And then we have the info, and the info is a widget. And this is pulling from this here, widget class we tell it what kind of widget. So we just link those three things up. So the type of star it is, this happens to be, you can't see it, but it is BP star base. And then the material on the sphere is star base. And the info is pointing to star info. And then I call them all widget, star info widget. And then the others are called uh, base G and base M for the classifications of star. So that's all that, and now let's take a look at our event graph. Now this I'm pulling from the event tick, which I could just bring this down here. And this is to make the widget constantly face the player. So what we're doing here is getting the player character, and I'm getting his component, the camera component. And then I'm getting the world location. And then this here is a reference to the default scene route, which is this guy here and we're going to get the world location. You just drag this over here, just drag onto here to get this. Um, we're going to get the world location. And then we're going to use this as a handy little trick, the find 
look at rotation and by plugging this into the target I want to look at the camera from where I am now and then we're going to put that return value into our new rotation and then of course with the event tick plugged in this is happening every frame so I'll kind of pause there for a moment for you to get a good look at that but that's a pretty simple flow there this is the real uh, crux of it and this was a really nice find to make this possible okay so now we have our stars and we have the widget but how do we get the widget to appear well, that's going to be in our coding of the actual first person player but first let's take a look at our materials quickly so our materials let's see here's a material so this is the material for the G star as you can see here he's quite glowy uh, a little too much for demonstration purposes I'm going to push this down to like three just so you can see it a little bit more so what I've done here is I've brought in a clouds and then we're using a color multiplied by the clouds very simply this is gets us a really close approximation of a star and then I'm multiplying it by uh, a value here and then pushing that directly into the emissive that's all we're using for this just the emissive so by doing that if I do put this back up to like 20 whatever he was at it's a pretty big number just so that he glows really nicely in the scene so that's our material there okay one more thing to cover before we look at the code for the player is um, the widgets that appear we need to give them that information so here's an example of the widget so when you in the viewer here if you right click and say I want to create a it's down here user interface a widget blueprint there's actually a I think there's another one down there too I just can't see it widget I thought there was one more beneath that 3d widget a widget blueprint you'll get this and what I've got here is the canvas I've actually hidden and then I said just give me a text box and for the text here I believe it's alt enter let me see or is it shift enter shift enter to, to break it down to a second line and then it's just some simple text here saying what classification it is what type what temperature and these are in Kelvin so that's 28,000 to 50,000 Kelvin so that sucker is hot and we are going to size the content just so it makes the box fit entirely around our text and then using the size and the anchors we're going to roughly center him now jumping back over to one of our previous ones if you look at the viewport for this guy for our star here our info you can't see him in the scene here because he is hidden by default but this is the location that he's going to be at so when you turn that uh, visible on so we can turn that visible on. You can see where he is, and this helps you kind of position him next to the star. But he needs to be visible off by default. Okay, so we are almost there. So let's go ahead and take a look at our player. Where did our player go to? Where are you at, player? The player has disappeared from you, so give me just a second, we will find him. First person character. He's completely invisible in the scene for some reason. But let's edit your blueprint, please. Look at your blueprint. All right, so this is where all the magic happens, okay? So now this is a little complicated, but I'm gonna go through it nice and slow with you and we will we'll figure it all out. So I'm actually borrowing from the spawn projectile because I did not really care about having the projectiles for this example. But essentially what we need to do is get a line trace. So coming off of the event tick, so we're doing this every frame, we need to grab the first person camera and so then we come down here and what I'm going to do is get the world location of that camera. I'm also going to get its world rotation, which this was already doing, so we're just going to borrow from that. Using the world rotation of the camera, we're going to drag that into a get forward vector. Okay and I'm going to multiply that or add rather sorry to that a value so this is the distance from where we are to where we want to be able to point at and then we're going to add that to where we currently are so you take a is where we are plus a distance gives us B alright 
So A gets plugged in right here to start, and B gets plugged in right here to end, which means from me to a certain reach in front of me, that's where we're going to shoot this line. So line trace by channel. And I had this debug turned on for a while, but you can turn this on or off. It's really nice. Turn it on for duration or for one frame so you can see where you're hitting. Okay, so then, so we've done our line trace. Now, what are we gonna do? We're gonna drag out this thing called a break hit result. And this tells us, tell me all about what I'm actually, what have I hit with this laser beam? You know, where, what am I doing with this? So what I'm gonna do here is say, okay, well, give me the name of the thing that you hit. Now, the left 10 characters, I'm gonna compare that to, this is a variable I made that is a string, and I called it BP star base. So if it has that name in the beginning in the first 10 characters, I don't care about the rest of it. So that, that way you can have multiple duplicates. You could have star base one, two, three, four, etc. I only care about the first 10 characters. If those first 10 characters are this, then if I have pressed the click button, left click, then we're going to do some stuff, okay? So the stuff we're going to do here is we're going to either turn on or turn off the visibility of... So we're going to take our actor again, but instead of getting the name of the star, I'm going to say get component by class, get the widget component, so that's that info, right? And say, all right, for that widget being our target, if I have left-clicked the first time, turn it on and propagate to any children. I was working with the idea of having um, satellites like moons or having uh, these, you know, this, this cool sci-fi stuff we did a couple weeks back, having something like that around the star, you know, just these cool interface type things. So we could propagate the visibility channel to the children. So the first time we click it, turn it on. If it's the second time or if it's the on, off, on, off, we click, turn it off. Make, a, make that info go away. So it looks big and scary, but I promise you this is pretty simple. Once you break it down, you look up each individual component and just think to yourself out loud, what is it I really wanna do? Well, I wanna be able to click on something and have something happen. Okay, well, how do I click on it? Well, first I have to know that I'm pointing at it. So that's how you do a line trace. And so just Googling those things, honestly, then you get to these, these points and say, okay, well, how do I do that? Okay, well, now how do I do that? And you just have to think about it, and you have to think about it in you know different ways. Programming is not always the easiest thing, but if you break it down to, in plain English, what is it I wanna do? Then you can start to figure out the steps. Okay, so with all that working, let's go back in and look at our scene again. So right away when I click, it's gonna start and show us that. But here we go, here's our class M planet, or star rather, pardon me. They're stars, Matt, they're stars. So here's class O, very nice. And now if I click these again, they'll disappear. Just the uh, the text will, there you go. Now I was already still hitting that, so you do have to move around here to this guy. There we go. So that's looking pretty nice, and we got one here. Come on, there you go. Now notice the, the text is smaller on this one because I scaled this one down because he's technically smaller in mass and diameter from these other stars. So that does lower the text and I'm working on a way to uh, make that equal size text regardless of the size of the star. But I think it kind of works, you know, it's a smaller star and as long as you can still read it, but if you want to be, you know, very precise, we'll, we'll find a way to do that. And then the rest of the assets here, I really just kind of put together, but if you're interested, I, I can put them up on the site and I'll, I'll have them for download if you wanted to have this, this little projector here. And the cone of light here is uh, simply a cone shape from Maya that has been imported and flipped upside down. And I can show you the material for that guy it is quite simple. Uh, hologram field, that's the static mesh. Hologram. And base planet. I was working on some stars as well. Here's the hologram material. No. Well, he's not as important, but I did want to make sure that you saw that everything here was created, you know, here we are, hollow field, very simple. So using a linear gradient, 
I'm taking the V gradient, so the uh, up and down, not left and right, and I'm just multiplying it by a very small value and pushing that into the opacity and then pushing the gradient itself into the base color. So by multiplying a number by a fraction of a whole, I can actually sort of lower the, the intensity. And so here's our result. As you can see, I'm spinning it. You can barely tell. And so by applying this to a cone with its default UVs, I haven't touched it at all, uh, you get this really neat effect of just you know light being projected from the center here. And the center here is uh, using, uh, in the material that I made here, it has a, uh, an emissive color in the middle there. And that emissive color propagates forward really nicely. We do have a light on top of that as well. And that light, oh, I know why the uh, things are not showing up. I'm in uh, presentation mode. <laughs> and uh, the light here is just to help, you know, kind of sell the effect a little bit more. Of It's really glowing and energy is coming from that. And it's putting forth a lot of uh, energy into making this display for you. And this does work best in a dark room. So that's why all the materials are quite dark around it. I just, you know, made some quick sci-fi ceilings and floors and such just for demonstration purposes and to make it kind of feel more at home in that environment. Now, the, the light objects obviously work best against the dark background. And I did uh, discover that if you have almost a pure white background, you can still see them if they're colored, but it's not as nice. So definitely make sure that you do that. So I hope this, this has been helpful for you guys, and I uh, hope that you enjoy uh, your, your own star fields here. And uh, as always, if you have any questions, uh, if you're interested in having these assets, I'll gladly share them with you. If you want to recreate this, follow the tutorial uh, yourself, and you want to make sure that you uh, follow it correctly with all the exact assets. And uh, also, uh, thanks very much for all your support. Uh, it's been a lot of fun recently and uh, we've been we've been doing really well with the pilgrimage and I'm really happy with uh, how it's been going and I'm happy that everybody is getting getting a lot out of it that's that's my main goal so if you have any questions if you have anything you're struggling with please let me know I'm happy to help and uh, as always guys uh, keep practicing get better and I'll see you next time as the pilgrimage continues <laughs>